Our week number five has begun this week of May 1st, and our object of our class, Business 630 Online, this week is to complete case number two, the capital budget risk analysis. <clears throat> Remember, the uh, reason why we're concentrating on capital budgeting is because in any strategic decision-making process of financial management, what's the goal of finance? To maximize shareholder value. To maximize shareholder value, you have to, A, invest in an asset that's going to provide an adequate return on the investment of that asset, <clears throat> be it a building, be it a product line, be an investment in a new company, be an investment in real estate, whatever. The cost, the return has to exceed the cost. And that's what capital budgeting analysis does. It sets the framework for the strategic decision making. You do the analysis before you actually spend and invest the money or borrow the money or seek the investment return. It's all done prior. And that's why this is such a key strategic template to concentrate on in strategic financial management, in which this course is all about. So first of all, we're going to be concentrating on that spreadsheet that we began last week, where we determined the weighted average cost of capital, where we determined the capital budgeting base case analysis of net present value, internal rate of return, profitability index, and payback, the four key areas of investment analysis. And now we're going to take it up a different notch this week and continue with that same problem where you have to complete the risk analysis. Two areas of risk, scenario and sensitivity analysis, another key part of this capital budgeting process. You're going to be doing all of these in your case number two due on, Mon on Sunday, May 7th. Again, extensions will be available for students, but I caution you, make sure you manage your extensions wisely. Don't take more than two, three days to post your, your case. The reason I say that is beginning next week, the workload is going to multiply. In addition to another case down the road, case number three, you'll also be doing a course assessment case paper, which will be posted this Friday, and it's due on May 28th. You have basically three weeks to do it, but it's a lot of work. It's doing a capital budget analysis and then a paper explaining your interpretation of what that analysis says about this investment. So more work is coming up in the second half of this course. Remember, we're now beginning the second half of corporate finance. So extensions, no problem, but don't get used to taking week or four or five, six day extensions because that's gonna lap over into other work you'll be doing. So that's just a word to the wise. If you have any questions on that, again, remember, uh, we have our student hours every Tuesday and Thursday from six to eight o'clock. This video is being produced on Tuesday, May 2nd. And so it'll be finished and posted by the time we have our student hours. So again, if you have questions or concerns about these cases, come online and ask them or send me an email and I'll I will answer them for you. I put in the chapters, and I know the text is not mandatory in this class, but I put in the cha chapters just for, because I know some of us, our students do have the text, and they, you can refer to those chapters about the subject I'm discussing tonight. So again, let's take a look where we stand in this class, beginning the second half of our course. And remember last week in week four, I encouraged any of you, if you had any issues with the course through the halfway mark, any problems, any time management issues, any technology issues, any material issues, any Blackboard issues, please to let me know in any way I can help you manage those issues, please do. Our uh, case number one grades have been posted to Blackboard. You have them. And right now we have completed roughly 30% of our grades through the fourth week of our course. We have 70 more percent of our grades yet to be done in the final four weeks of our class. So plenty of work remains, as I indicated earlier, in your time management that you need to do.
So again, if you go to the case study file folder, you will see the case number two all set up with a uh, description of the case uh, in a PDF and a Word doc, a rubric of how I will be grading the case. And then the key part of this case is the spreadsheet or worksheet template that you need to download and put all your work on that. You must submit that file. Any other file will be unacceptable. If you put that file, a spreadsheet file into a PDF format, unacceptable. Everything has to be done on that file. So please remember that because I'd hate you to do all the work and good work and then give it to me in a format that's not recommended, you will get a zero. And that, that's the warning I give you. There will be no second chances if you did, did not listen to this video or this explanation. So again, case number one was an APA format paper. And you all did very well on that. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. And also, this is a worksheet or spreadsheet format. All right. So remember, that's a key as part of the presentation of this material on the format that the professor asks you to do that. So again, make sure you remember that as you begin case two work. <clears throat> case number one. Case number one, grades have been posted. And I want to go over briefly the my solution example. This is not the actual grading ex grading of the work, but this is, is an example of how I might show the work in the format desired so you can get a, a, a view on it. Some of you, I explained where you got wrong, and you can see that calculation of those areas in this paper. So let's take a look at that paper. Okay, again, this is an APA format which requires certain elements of that design or that present pre presentation of the paper. And you were taking points off if you did not uh, meet those guidelines. I provided a sample paper earlier so you can see that. But again, here's the title page. Notice it's the subject of the corp whatever corporation you selected. Notice the name of the class, the term we're in, the date of this, and the professor and the name of our class. Miss a couple of these items. This is what's required in graduate study to properly present your work. Then it goes on to explain a table of contents. How am I presenting this work? The executive summary or the abstract. Part one, quantitative analysis. Part two, qualitative analysis. And the cited resources, sources or references of this case. Many of you did not have a table of contents, but, and I did not take off for that, but in the future, especially with our course assessment paper, where you'll be doing an APA formatted paper, make sure you have a table of contents explaining where your information is. The executive summary or abstract states the purpose of your paper. What are you trying to do? The name of the company that you have selected and what you're going to be doing about that. And then we get into a quantitative analysis. Now, some of you had correct numbers, but how you presented it made it very difficult for the reader, me, to understand it. By just writing paragraphs of information, it's not too user-friendly to look at. So I suggest, as you can see in my sample, different ways of doing this. Here's a, here's a, a chart or a, a, a chart of explaining the capital asset pricing model return on investment. In this case of this company, it's 11.57% with a beta of 1.24, a risk-free rate, a market premium of 6.55, and so on. There's the percent of debt, percent of equity, and a so on with the analysis, then some written descriptions of that analysis, the credit rating of the company, and so on. Then I gave another breakdown of how I calculated the WAC. The WAC would taking the cost of equity or the disk capital asset pricing model and the after tax cost of debt, taking the cost of debt 8% and multiplying it by 75%, one minus the tax rate of this problem, all this was given to you, gives us 6%. Then you weight the 6% by <clears throat> the, the debt position of the company. Remember, it has to total 100%, in this case, 82% debt, 18% equity. 
And many of you got that by looking up the balance sheet of your companies. And, and then weighting the 11.57% cost of equity by the weight or the capital structure, I end up getting 7%. So two areas that I was looking for are in this example of this part one. First of all, the credit rating of your company. Second of all, your capital asset or the beta of the company using the beta that you found and then doing the calculation of the capital asset pricing model, cost of equity, and then the actual calculation of the weighted average cost of capital here. And then an explanation of the process and of the information about your company. Part two was a qualitative analysis using organizational and environmental risk of the company. A little bit different, not so much numbers, more of what's the status of the management team of this company? How is the company doing in relationship to its industry, to its competitors, and so on? I was looking for your interpretation of that. There's no set answer because naturally it's being driven by the type of company you selected, but I wanted some non-numerical analysis in relationship to the environment, the organizational, what type of additional risk besides the WAC and the capital asset pricing cost of equity does your specific company have? Notice it's double space, proper font, and that's what I was looking for. Then the work cited or the references. Naturally, I'm I sometimes take a look at these very closely, or as a matter of fact, I always do, to make sure you're getting your information correctly. And that's the paper. On the whole, the class did excellent, very good. Some of us struggled a little bit with the presentation. Some of us struggled a little bit with the calculations. Some of us struggled a little bit interpreting part two, but that's the nature of the learning experience of this case. This is the type of paper that a financial analyst will do for a bank on a company. The company might be thinking about doing business with a particular corporation, lending them money, trying to do business with them, investing with them. They'll need an analysis of their risk. And this is a very similar document that's done in the real world about analyzing the risk of a corporation. So on the whole, everybody did excellent. Couple of other areas where we need to work on and please take note of the APA format. Now here's our case study for this week due on Sunday, May 7th. And a lot of you can start on this and maybe many of you have already done uh, at, the, at the course of last week as you got that first initial spreadsheet file. But it's a two-part analysis. First of all, what is called the base case analysis, very similar to the one we looked at last week where you are asked to determine the weighted average cost of capital based on this information provided. Then you're going to take that uh, weighted average cost of capital and use that on the discount rate in your problem and set up with these parameters of investment, depreciation, salvage, investment life, working capital base percentage, inflation rate, units sold per year, the tax rate stays the same as the WAC, 20%, selling price, fixed cost, variable costs. Put all those together and determine their return in NPV, internal rate of return, profitability index, index, and payback. And just answer me one simple question at the end of that part one in the analysis is, in your opinion, is this investment approval? Is it? Would you approve it? Simple yes or no typed into that spreadsheet will give me your interpretation. Now, in the course assessment paper going to be posted later this week, you'll be writing a paper about your decision or opinion on this analysis, a little bit more involved, but hopefully by that time we're working on this, you've been experienced with this type of analysis and you can interpret it in writing. And I also help you by asking the questions in the course assessment case of what you need to answer for that paper. But case number two is a little bit more straightforward. Then once you get that base analysis done, you go to part two. And this is the third tab in the spreadsheet template that's given to you for case number two. I ask you to do a scenario and sensitivity analysis. And that's the subject of our lecture tonight with that sample that we began last week. All right, we'll take a look at that in just a minute. 
Then the final question of this case, and you can write it on the spreadsheet at the end of your analysis, how does the risk analysis affect net present value? Please show the calculation. So you don't really have to write anything. You're showing me the calculations provided in that template of what the scenario analysis is at different volumes of unit sales and the sensitivity analysis, specific changes in three different variables of the case, selling price per unit, variable cost per unit, and fixed cost. How do those changes affect the net present value? And that's the basis of part two. And you'll show those in your Tab, tab, a table that I have provided for you. So that's case number two, a good spreadsheet analysis of an investment by a company. Is the return doable? All right. Again, here is that template file that I provide you in case number two. You are to download this file and do all your work and calculations on this spreadsheet. So again, based on the information I gave you, calculate the WAC. Based on the information and the variables given to you, calculate NPV, IRR, profitability index, and payback and give a yes or a no to the analysis. And based on the information I give you, determine the sensitivity NPV and determine the NPV at the variety of different, excuse me, the scenario NPV, and then the entire variety of sensitivity NPVs. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. And once you do this, the graph will be constructed on its own. You don't have to do anything about that. It'll create itself based on the data here. So that's the case template that you need to do your work on for this week. So now let's pick up on that work file that we started in week four that defined the capital budget of process, that defined how to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. In this case, it was 9.78%. Notice that format is exactly the same in the case number two, but the numbers are a little bit different. You are to adapt to that. Remember, you also did this calculation for your company in your case number one paper. So you fill that in. Then you go to the base analysis. And we finished this up last week on at our weekend video is how you complete the base case analysis to determine NPV, IRR, profitability, and payback. Now, if I was interpreting this information, I would definitely give this a yes. I would give this definitely a yes, because why? Because the net present value is almost $385,000 profit over the 10-year life. The internal, revenue, internal rate of return is 17.03%, almost double the cost of the capital. The profitability index ratio is greater than one, and the payback is in less than half the amount of depreciable life of the asset. Pretty positive. So I would give this a yes if I was interpreting this. I'm looking for you to do the same thing in case number two. Now, remember, though, case number two is a seven-year life, not 10. That spreadsheet is given to you. Case number two has different variables. So you have to make sure you provide that get those variables, insert them in that template, and then do the calculations, including inflation. Now, the inflation will be different from what you're seeing here. So that's part of your assessment is for you to adapt and change that spreadsheet and then make the interpretation of the analysis. The second and the last part of this case is to do a risk analysis. And that's what we're gonna work on here. Remember the risk analysis is from <clears throat> the textbook, chapter 11. And uh, it's if in case of any of you, pages 469 to 473, excuse me, 465 to 473, if you wanna refer that to your book, but this should be enough of referral and practice here in doing this. It's a little bit different. The risk analysis is taking the base case, which in this case is 25,000 units produced, taking the MPV. Now, we've already done that calculation here. Remember, 25,000 units produced. What's our MPV? $384,719. So we take that 384.
insert it in our spreadsheet, and automatically it takes 50% of that, and there's our probability in NPV. Now, here's what scenario analysis is all about. It determines, all right, what is, how is it my profits going to change if I sell more or sell yet less during the depreciable life? And then you record it or interpret it as a, the likelihood that is happening. Now, many of you have taken statistics at some time or another, and this is a lot, this has to do a lot with the risk managers of a corporation or even the public accountants. They will determine the likelihood or the probability uh, or the risk involved in these of you achieving these different types of scenarios. It's a 50% chance we're going to sell our base case 25,000. There's a 25% chance we'll sell 35,000. There's a 25% chance will sell 12,500. Incorporate all those and determine a weighted average of that probability. So again, now for 35,000, we just go back to our spreadsheet and in just insert right here, instead of 25,000, 35,000. And automatically everything changes because I set the spreadsheet up accordingly. And this is one of the key things that you have to do. Set it up so automatically all you do is do, all you do is change one set of numbers and everything changes. That's why it might be a good idea when you set up your template for some students, they'll maybe want to do this individually and set it up. Some might just copy the spreadsheet and insert it in the template for the case. But remember, when you do that, you're gonna to have to make sure you change all the variables in these certain columns, but that's one way of doing it. So notice, $35,000, 35,000 unit sales is going to produce an NPV of 948,836. So now I put that 948,836 right here, and weight it by 25% probability, and there's that NPV probability. I go back to the base case and now change that to the sensitivity number of 12,500 units sold. And automatically it changes. And notice now at selling 12,500 units, we're going to lose 320,000 $426. Mm -hmm. We'll put that here. Minus 32426. And now we have a minus weighted there. So what now the sensitivity analysis does, takes us, and it, it now it weights the NPVs at these different levels of sales, and it weights them by the probability of them occurring, and the total is still a positive number. Pretty good number, by the way, 349, 462. So taking all these scenarios and averaging them out, we're still making a nice hefty profit. But the thing to beware on this, and this is what financial analysts do, is we now know if we get close to 12,500 units in the future of this project, if, it's, if, if all of a sudden the numbers start going south, we know that we're in danger of losing money. And tw this is not the break even point of this project, but it's pretty close. At 12,500 units, we're losing big time money. So it tells the manager of this investment, yes, we'll probably approve the project. It looks profitable, even taking into account the, the scenarios. But we have to make sure that if we see our sales dropping dramatically, maybe because of a pandemic, a change in the market, our customers don't like us anymore, whatever, we need to be aware of that as we get closer to maybe 15,000 units, 17,000 units, we're going to start losing money and we have to be careful. And that's an important management analytical number. So there's the sensitivity analysis. It just takes taking the base case and adjusting the, I put it in green here, the units for each of those scenarios. Now I'm going to go back to the original base case. And there we go. We're back to number no, normal 384.719. That's what we calculated last week. So now we're set up used to do this sensitivity analysis. The sensitivity analysis is to just change these individual variables one at a time, not all at once. We change the selling price 
by negative 15%, what's the NPV? By negative 10%, what's the NPV? And so on. Saying what, what is the variables of where we start losing money if certain key variables change by a certain percent. That's what the sensitivity. How sensitive are the variables to losing money? Now, naturally, selling price probably is going to be our most sensitive variable because everything evolves around the revenue. So if all of a sudden, in order to sell 25,000 units, we have to reduce our selling price by 15% to sell 25,000 units in our base case, what is that going to do to our profits or NPV? Well, let's take a look at that. We go back to the base case, and now we go to our selling price per unit right here, $20. And we now take, we now reduce that by times 0.85, right? One minus 15% is 0.85. So we're now going to take 85% times the $20. And because I have this already set up in our format, watch what happens. Boom. We now go from 384,000 with a 15% reduction in our selling price per unit. Our NPV now goes to $32,675. So we put that here. 32,675. All right. Now watch what happens as we start putting this data. This chart will grow. So now let's go back to the base case and reduce our selling price by 10%. So it'll be $20 times 0.9, right? 10% reduction. 150.023 is our NPV. Go back here, 150.023. And now you begin to see the chart taking place as it's taking these values. A 5% reduction in the selling price. $20 times 0.95. We now have 267, 371. 267, 371. With no change in our selling price, we still we have our original base case of 384, 719. Okay, now notice I know I'm doing this correctly because my line is staying straight. If this line has bumps in it or goes starts curving, it means you did something wrong in this calculation. And we'll, I'll show you that. Now in the second half of this, now we're going to increase the selling price by 5%. Let's say we have a product like Apple computer iPhone that if we sell 25,000 units, we can get away with even selling it at a higher price because there's such a demand for our product. So let's increase the $20 back in our base case by taking $20 times a 5% increase, 1.05. And now we're making even more money, 502.067. Notice when I change this, because I set this spreadsheet up properly, my weighted average cost of capital changes, everything changes accordingly. Pretty nifty. That's what spreadsheets are so great to have in finance. So now 582.067, 502.067. And there we go. Now a 10% increase in our selling price, 1.10. Four sixteen. Now let's say six nineteen four sixteen. Let's say I do a typo and I put in five nineteen six fourteen. Because let's say I make a mistake in typing it in. Look what happens to the line. Oh, I know I've made a mistake. What did I do? It's not exactly straight. It's not saying staying consistent with the five 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 delta of each one of those lines. So I know I did something wrong. I got to go back to my analysis and say, oh, yeah, 619.416. All right, 619.416. And I put that in and it straightens out. Pretty nifty, huh? And then finally, 15% return or increase in our selling price. Boy, this is a, 
a real good company, they can increase their price 15% and still sell those 25,000 units. So that's times 1.15. And we're making 736, 764. 736, 764. And there we're done. So now we've completed the sensitivity analysis saying that if we change our selling price by lowering it or increasing it to meet the need demand in the market of 25,000 units, it the spread from below bottom to top is a roughly $704,000. That's the delta or the range of this analysis. And that range or delta is indicated in the degree of this line. The higher the range, the more steeper the slope of the line. And that's what we're doing here. Now, let's do a variable cost per unit. But before we do that, we got to remember, we got to go back to the base case and make everything where it was in the beginning, $20 a unit. All right, we're back at 384. 719. So now what's the sensitivity analysis in this? Well, our variable cost rate in this problem is eight bucks a unit. So now we're going to change eight dollars by these variety of deviations in the sensitivity change of that cost per unit. So eight dollars back to the base case. We now will put in eight dollars times 0.85 a 15% reduction. So we're going to start making more money if we reduce our costs. And oops, there we go. And I purposely did this. Now remember, we just took 85% of $8 and got $6.80. But what happened? All right. We need what happened to our variable cost rate. All right. B8 is the number of units times eight. So our number didn't change. So I set up the spreadsheet incorrect here. I did not include the cell that the variable cost is in. I just put in $8. So now I got to go back to this formula and put in the cell that eight, that $6.80 is, which is B11. Input that, and everything now changes because now I've matched the cell with the change or delta in the cost per unit. So that's sometimes a mistake that some of us use. I already set that up in this problem for revenue, but I did not do it for variable costs. And now when I did that, the rest of the spreadsheet takes over. And so with a 15% reduction in variable cost per unit to $6.80, I'm now making 525 to 20. 525 to 20. Notice I put that here. These are all done. Don't worry about them. Now I go back $8 times 0.9, a 10% reduction in cost. Now that I have my spreadsheet all formalized, 478, 386. My NPD you know, goes to 478. 386. And now, as you can see, my line is going beginning. Notice revenue gut line goes left to right. Expense line goes right to left. I say that right? Left to right? Whatever. Okay, whatever. It goes the opposite direction. 5% reduction in variable cost. 0 0.95. 431,553. My line is staying straight. Now we just type in 384,719 with no change. It goes back to our original base case. All right, cool. And then now we change, now we begin to increase the cost of variable cost by 5%. So $8 times 1.05. Now we're going to make probably less money. There we go. 337,886. Technology, isn't it wonderful? Increase our cost by 10%, 1.10. Be a good idea if you practice this on your own with this spreadsheet from Blackboard. 291,052. Okay. And then a 15% 
increase, excuse me, increase in cost, 1.15, And there we go. And notice, you know, you also did this right because the line is straight, but also where they intersect, intersect right here is 384,719, which is your NPV of your original base case. So you know you did this right because they intersect right at that line. Notice the range is a lot lower than the selling price per unit and notice the line is a lot flatter. That tells you that selling price is a lot more sensitive to change than your variable costs. And that makes sense because it's a higher amount. Okay, now let's go back to the base case and go back to normal, go back to just the straight $8. And now everything's back to normal. So now we're gonna do the third variable in this case. Remember our fixed costs are $50,000. There they are right there. So now we're gonna adjust the fixed cost by these deviations. Notice we don't touch any of these anymore. How does the fixed cost deltas affect NPV? So let's go back and go to fixed costs. equals 50,000 times 0.85, 42,005. But remember, oh, this didn't change because I just typed in the 50,000. So I'm gonna have to adjust this cell to equal this cell here. So it'll automatically change every time when I make that adjusting delta. So a 15% reduction in the $50,000 fixed cost means a reduction of $7,500 in my fixed cost. That gives me 418,534 NPV, okay? The cool thing about spreadsheets in this analysis is it does all our discounted cash flow. Once we do this, everything is all set up once we do these adjustments. So let's reduce our selling price of fixed cost by 10% to 0.9, 50,000 times 0.9, we get 45,000, 407, 262. 407, 262. And there's the line again. And now we go to 5% reduction in fixed cost, 0.95. 395.991. Type in the 384.719. And there we go. Notice this line is even flatter. Let's see what how this ends up. Now we increase the very the fixed cost by 5%. 373448. Increase it by 10%, 362, 176. The line is staying straight. And finally, a 15% increase in fixed cost, 1.15, 35905. The line stays nice and straight. And notice here, the range is only 67,629 top to bottom. So definitely the fixed cost is the least sensitive variable. So a couple things to note after we get done with this analysis. And I'll go to that, but first of all, let's go back to my spreadsheet and make sure everything was back where it was before, just so when I post this to Mr. Hasse, he's cool with everything. There you go. Now, what does the sensitivity analysis? Well, it tells us that if we decide to change the selling price in any way to make, make sure we sell those 25,000 units, if we have to lower the selling price, we're dramatically going to cut into our profits. If we have the luxury of increasing our sell, selling price like Apple computer, we can make even more money. But it tells us that the sensitivity variable is selling price because it's steeper slope. If we increase or decrease our 
cost of manufacturing or variable costs, it's still a pretty good change. But notice it doesn't really get to be too ugly. The same thing with fixed cost. The range is not that high. And we can show this range or sensitivity by the slope of those lines. And it's a nice thing to present to investors or to managers about how this does. In the real world, companies through the software of SAP and through the software of Oracle can produce these automatically by downloading the accounting information of the company. And many sensitivity analysis are made for every expense of that particular project. So the managers can, managers can see the sensitivity issues of their product. Pretty cool. Now, pretty cool if you're a financial person. If you're not a financial per person, this is kind of, hmm, this is really exciting. But for our class, this is important because number one, you're doing this in case number two, and you're doing this also in the course assessment paper, and we'll see that on Friday. So I'm now going to save this and post it to week number five in our in-class review file folder. So you now have this downloaded version of the entire process of capital budgeting, determining the discount rate or the cost of capital, doing the base analysis and the return analysis, and then finally doing the risk analysis, changing the levels of unit sales based on a probability and changing certain key sensitivity variables by a deviation of certain percentage ranges. Now, in some companies, they start at minus 30%. In this example, it's 15%. So that's our analysis for this week number five. You are to incorporate this analysis in your case number two, and you'll use it again in another week, couple of weeks with the course assessment paper. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you all on Friday or before then in our student hours, but I'll see you all on Friday with an update video going over this course assessment paper and dealing with any final questions you may have on this capital budget process. A lot of spreadsheet work this week. It's a na nature of the beast in financial management. Have a great week, everybody. Adios.